peace be with you. My name is Rodolfo Martin Vitancol, a Gemini. In this video, I will present to you, Yahweh did not create man. It was man who created Yahweh. The Yahweh of the Jews shares the many imperfections of man. First imperfection, he will decide on one thing and then later, while already in the middle of it, will change his mind. Good thing that in one instance, he changed his mind while yet in the act of about to destroy his people. Exodus 32, 9-14 Then the Lord said, I have seen how stubborn and rebellious these people are. Now leave me alone, so my fierce anger can blaze against them, and I will destroy them. Then I will make you Moses into a great nation. But Moses tried to pacify. The Lord is God. O oh Lord, he has said, why are you so angry with your own people whom you brought from the land of Egypt with such great power and such a strong, and such a strong hand? Why let the Egyptians say their God rescued them with the evil intention of slaughtering them in the mountains and wiping them from the face of the earth? Turn away from your fierce anger. Change your mind about this terrible disaster you have threatened against your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? You bound yourself with an oath to them, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars of heaven, and I will give them all of this land that I have promised to your descendants, and they will possess it forever. So the Lord changed his mind about the terrible disaster he had threatened to bring on his people. Haven't you noticed anything about the passage I have just read to you, aside from the Yahweh acting like an ordinary human being with changeable mind? Moses was acting like a parent to his God Yahweh who was behaving like a spoiled brat, telling him to contain his tantrum so as not to be an embarrassment or a laughing stock to the Egyptians from whom he freed his people. And he was successful. He was able to prevail upon Yahweh to come to his senses and contain himself. No human could ever do that to his own God except Moses. Is Yahweh really a God or just as human as we? There is one instance, though, that before Yahweh could come to his senses and change his mind, it was already late. 70,000 people had already died. First Chronicles 21, 1-17 
Satan rose up against Israel and caused David to take a census of the people of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Take a census of all the people of Israel from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north and bring me a report so I may know how many there are. This command of David to Joab was evil in the sight of God. So he punished Israel. The Lord sent a plague upon Israel and 70,000 people died as a result. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But just as the angel was preparing to destroy it, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop! That is enough. Second imperfection. There were many things he did which he regretted having done at all. For instance, he regretted having created man on earth due to the wickedness of man. For that, he decided to blot, blot man out, including the innocent beasts, creeping creatures and birds from the face of the earth. But even that, he also would later regret and would swear in the high heavens never to do it again. Genesis 8, 20 to 21. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. Yahweh also regretted having made Saul king over Israel. 1 Samuel 15, 35 The Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. He seemed to have also regretted having chosen the Jewish race as his most treasured possession, for in the end, because of their brazen wickedness, he had no other choice but to reject the whole race of Israel. 2 Kings 17, 13 to 20. Again and again, the Lord had sent his prophets and seers to warn both Israel and Judah. Turn from all your evil ways. Obey my commands and decrees. But the Israelites would not listen. They were as stubborn as their ancestors who had refused to believe in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant he had made with their ancestors and they despised all his warnings. 
Because the Lord was very angry with Israel, he swept them away from his presence. The Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel. He punished them by handing them over to their attackers until he had punished Israel from his presence. Third, imperfection. There were many instances he himself violated his very own laws, decrees, commands, and doctrines. I will just, I will cite just four instances. Instance number one, his doctrine on marriage, Genesis 2, 23 to 24. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. How did Yahweh violate his own doctrine on marriage? Exodus 21, 2 to 4. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years. But in the seventh year, he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he is to go free alone. But if he has a wife, when he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the woman and her children shall belong to her master and only the man shall go free. Deuteronomy 21 10 to 14. When you go to war against your enemies and the Lord your God delivers them into your hands and you take captives, if you notice among the captives a beautiful woman and are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. Bring her into your home and have her shave her head, trim her nails, and put aside the clothes she was wearing when captured. After she has lived in your house and mourned her father and mother for a full month, then you may go to her and be her husband and she shall be your wife. If you are not pleased with her, let her go wherever she wishes. You must not sell her or treat her as a slave, since you have dishonored her. Instance number two, his commandment on murder. Numbers 35, 33 to 34. Do not pollute the land where you are. Bloodshed pollutes the land. Do not defile the land where you live and 
where I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. How did Yahweh violate his own commandment on murder? Exodus 32, 27 to 28. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Each man struck a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. Instance number three is law on individuality of sin. Deuteronomy 24, 16. Parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. How did Yahweh violate his own law on individuality of sin? 2 Samuel 12, 13-14 Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You're not going to die. But because by doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord, your son born to you will die. Instance number four, his commandment on adultery. Exodus twenty fourteen. You shall not commit adultery. How did he violate his own commandment on adultery? Because David killed Uriah the Hittite to take his wife to be his own, Yahweh punished David. And this is the punishment he gave David. 2 Samuel 12, 7 to 12. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you. And he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Instance number four, he broke his promise to David. First Chronicles 22, seven to 10. David said to Solomon, the Lord came to me and said, you have shed much blood 
and have fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. How did he break his own promise to David? 1 Kings 11, 19 to 14. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon, to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude, and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Then the Lord raised up against Solomon an adversary, Hadad, the Edomite, from the royal line of Edom. The beautiful descriptions attributed to the Yahweh of the Jews do not match up with his, with his recorded deeds. His deeds, more than his words, reflected his true character. Consider some of the descriptions that were accorded Yahweh vis-a-vis -vis his deeds. Beautiful description, number one. Yahweh is slow to anger. Exodus 34, 6. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger. The truth is, Yahweh is quick to anger. Numbers 14, 10 to 12. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all the signs I performed among them? I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. Beautiful description number two. Yahweh is forgiving of rebellion. Exodus 34, 7. The Lord, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving rebellion. The truth is, Yahweh is unforgiving of rebellion. When the people rebelled against God's plan, for them to enter the land he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God punished them severely. Deuteronomy 1, 
35 to 36. No one from this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give your ancestors except Caleb, son of Jepune. Beautiful description number three. Yahweh is forgiving of sin. Exodus 34, 7. The Lord maintaining love to thousands and forgiving sin. The truth is, Yahweh is unforgiving of sin. He could never ever forgive Moses for the sin he had committed. His punishment, he will not be allowed to enter the promised land. Deuteronomy 3, 23-28 At that time, I pleaded with the Lord, Sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. But because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. That is enough. The Lord said, Do not speak to me anymore about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes since you are not going to cross this Jordan. But commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead his people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. Beautiful description, number four. Yahweh is compassionate. Exodus 34, 6 The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. The truth is, Yahweh is merciless. Deuteronomy 7, 16 You must destroy all the peoples the Lord your God gives over to you. Do not look on them with pity and do not serve their gods for that will be a snare to you. Beautiful description, number five. Yahweh is holy. Leviticus 19, one to two. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy. Because I, the Lord your God, am holy. The truth is, 
He is most unholy. Second Samuel 12, 11 to 12. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you. And he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Beautiful description, number six. Yahweh is just. Deuteronomy 32, 4. A faithful God who does not, who does no wrong, upright and just is He. The truth is, Yahweh is unjust. Exodus 34, 7. Yet, he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 33, 19. And the Lord said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Beautiful description number seven. Yahweh is caring. Nehemiah 9, 19 to 21. Because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the wilderness. By day, the pillar of cloud did not fail to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way they were to take. You gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and you gave them water for their thirst. For forty years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet become swollen. The truth is, Yahweh is most uncaring, in fact, brutal. What is so caring about letting Yahweh's people stay in the desert for 40 long years till they all die and rot there, when it only needs two weeks the most to cross the desert from Egypt to the Promised Land? What is so caring about his people being sustained for 40 long years in the wilderness with only manna and water? Exodus 16, 2-3 The Israelites said to Moses and Aaron, 
If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into, into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. So do you call that caring? I call it unparalleled display of sadism that only a psychotic God can do to his very own people whom ironically he calls his chosen people the chosen ones to be tortured and die in the desert Beautiful description. Number eight. Psalm 23. One to three. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Psalm, the book written by David, is full of beautiful descriptions about Yahweh that you would think David was describing the father of Jesus and not the evil Yahweh. Psalm is a perfect example of laundering an evil God that is an evil and murderous God gets washed clean and good smelling to all his worshippers. Unfortunately, the actual Yahweh in the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, belied all the superlative goodness of Yahweh in the Psalm. Let's take, for example, Psalm 23. The first line says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. Indeed, the Jews, freed by Yahweh from slavery in Egypt, did not lack anything such as food except its own manna they had been eating for 40 years, no other food like what they used to have in Egypt. The next line says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. I don't see any green pastures in the desert, much less quiet waters that are refreshing to the soul. Do you? If it was not Yahweh who created man, but rather it was man who created Yahweh. Who was that man who created Yahweh then? There is only one person who could have created Yahweh. 
He is that person who could talk Yahweh into coming to his senses during his peak of irrationality. That person is no other than Moses. Yahweh is Moses. Moses is Yahweh. The two are one. As a creation of Moses, Yahweh acts the exact character of his own creator, vengeful, murderous, unforgiving, and merciless, virgin on psychoticism. If it was not Yahweh who created man, who really created man then, it is the Father of Jesus, He who has the perfection of the only true God. The Father of Jesus is the one and only true God. John 17, 3, Jesus said, Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, In Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The Father of Jesus is a perfect God. Matthew 5, 48, Jesus said, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Perfection number one. Perfect in His love. John 15, 13, Jesus said, Greater love is no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Perfection number two, perfect in his justice. Luke 6, 20 to 26, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors
treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich. For you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now. For you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now. For you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. For that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Perfection number three. Perfect in his compassion. Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field. Perfection number four. Perfect in his mercy. Luke 23, 39 to 43. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. Perfection number five. Perfect in his reward. Luke 18, 29 to 30, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life.
Amen. If you want to see a new life, a life that you've never seen before, may I invite you to subscribe to this channel and walk with Jesus all the way to making his miserable life happen in our world. We owe it to our children and the children of our children for all the generations to come, the making of our world a most beautiful and happy place for everyone, especially the poor and the oppressed among us, whom Jesus calls the least of his brothers and sisters. In the name of God, through his only son, Jesus, I wholeheartedly thank him for viewing this video presentation. May the Spirit of God be always with you so that you may always be guided by the one and only truth who is our Father in heaven through His only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.